Hi, in this video we are going to be completing the Infinity Orb. So this has been a just a really awesome build and is I've learned so much, especially on the electronics end. Uh, you can take a look at the other video I just did about the uh, Adafruit uh, trinket and NeoPixel wiring. I did that just uh, earlier in the week, but it was how uh, this was all wired and programmed. And this is, of course, the electronics that go into the Infinity Orb that'll do all the little light show. And again, that video, I did that last week. You can take a look at that. And today what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be uh, wire, putting the switch up through the little hole here like we needed. We're also going to be trying to fit all of this. I mean, it doesn't look like a lot, but there's not a lot of room in here. In here and put the cap on, right? So I have dug out a lot of... Uh, plastic <laughs> cut it away I've also cut away a lot of plastic in here now what this is this is a um, micro USB extension cable so uh, I stripped away a lot of the wiring on the ends and it is now poking just barely poking through this thing here and this is where uh, we'll now be able to plug this in to charge it because if you remember this right here this backpack charges the battery so actually, I forgot, we also need to fit this in there. So I might be uh, using the Dremel to cut away some more plastic uh, in here so we can fit these things in. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, disconnect the switch from here. And then we're going to uh, wire it up through this little hole here. Now, if you hadn't seen that other video and you, you're going to go over there later, quick on this. Once the battery's plugged in, the NeoPixel goes on, okay? And then when the button is pushed in, it's off. So that's gonna be when the two Infinity Ore pieces are together, it'll be off. And when you lift them up, it goes on, okay? So uh, what we need to do is we need to disconnect this and plug it in or uh, connect it over into the Infinity Orb. And then we're gonna start mashing all that stuff in there to make it fit and making sure we don't damage any of the wiring <laughs> so let's go ahead and start uh start assembly this is great i cannot wait <laughs> okay it is very early it's when i have a chance to do some of these videos so uh, i will be taking some breaks to drink my coffee <laughs> oh that's good so first thing we're going to do uh gloves this stuff uh once it gets on your hands, it's a pain to get off, apparently. And uh, I don't feel like having silver all over my hands all day long. Little reminder, always buy the next size glove up that you think you need. <laughs> These gloves are crazy tight. Okay. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. All right, so we're going to pop these guys apart. And we'll do this one next. And let's go ahead and get the rubbing both. We got some paper towel right here. Uh, pop that open. That is very silver. That is going to be very cool. And now uh, I've read and uh, other videos, oh, that came right out, have said that a little goes a long way. I didn't expect this to be so. Um, watery oh it is though it's very watery i just splooged a whole bunch out on a on a um paper plate i thought it would be a little thicker a little more viscous so i'm going to dab it off of this plate okay so i've got a little bit on there i mean i think this is pretty much going to do everything if i if the videos other videos i have seen are correct and i'm just going to wipe this over Ooh, that looks nice <laughs> wow look at that look at that shine that is just oh it's so exciting and I think I can literally do this entire thing with that tiny bit I put on there I'll probably give it a couple coats because it's uh, some of the black is showing through 
but um, if you remember the this thing, it, you know, this thing is pretty battle hardened or battle. You know, it's been kicked around the universe quite a bit. So, you know, the silver might not show as much, but at the same time, I want it to be a little bit more silvery. Uh, but wow, that looks so cool. So cool. Oh, and I got it. That is neat. Now, you know, uh, again, we'll put a second coat on, but it, it also gets um, a coat of silver around the inner edge up here. So I'm going to get a little bit more on there and get in the cracks. And now this will also be a good test to see how much um, the sort of cleaning up I did of the uh, what's that called? The putty. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. I might scuff it up a little bit uh, with a knife again to really get those shapes to come out a little bit more. And probably shouldn't be touching the outside while I'm doing this. But that looks really nice. I'm going to pick up a little bit more. The top's a little trickier because it's got a lot of crevices. So you might have to give that a little bit more than you did the um, the bottom. But that looks very cool. I'm gonna give it, put some more, I'm gonna shake this up. I don't know if you're supposed to shake it up, but I, again, I didn't think it was gonna be as uh, liquidy. I thought it was gonna be more like paint, but it is more like, um, I don't know, more like a dye almost. And it's um, how liquid it is. Okay, so I'm gonna let this one sit. Uh, again, you probably want to do the bottom and then do the top because uh, it's sort of rubbed off a little bit on here, which has made the bottom look a little bit scuffed up. So I'm going to just set that right there. Actually, let me get it out of the way since I'm going to do another, the other half. So let's just do, actually, we need some more rub and buff. You know, and now after I've um, shook this up, it is a little bit thicker. So I would go ahead and probably give this a good, you know, just a good shake. You can hear it in there. It's very liquidy. But um, now that I've done that, I can see it's just all over the gloves. And uh, the other thing I'm noticing is the paper towel is getting pretty much eaten away there because uh, this is so rough. Uh, if I was going to do this again, I probably would have used... Um, uh, like a, a cloth, like a, not a tack rag, but like a um, one of those uh, dustproof cloths. You can go buy a huge bag of them at Lowe's. Um, but wow, that when that happens, when that goes on there, it is it is so cool. I have been waiting to do this, and I definitely would shake it up um, because the the rub and buff because it is going on much thicker now. And the black is showing through a lot less. So we've got both pieces done, and you can maybe you can see it's hard. It's hard to I don't know. This one is more shiny than this one, and it, this is after I shook up the rub and buff. So you might want to shake up that shake up that rub and buff to make it work. Now I'm going to look at some of the screen references. Uh, I don't know if it's super shiny. The black is super shiny as well. Uh, I kind of like it matte black. Because uh, it really, there's a good contrast. Uh, but I'm going to also, when we're done, of course, give this a, a coat, uh, a spray of a, um, what would that be called? I'm, I'm blanking, you know, like a finish so that it seals it. And uh, I might just do a semi-gloss or maybe a, maybe a satin to sort of give it a little bit of shine in there. So there we go. We've uh, started the final painting process. Looking very cool. Very excited. Okay, so now uh, I sort of did one, uh, this is a half, and you can see uh, the difference here. Uh, this was with the uh, sort of the straight, um, I think it was a copper, uh, check the show notes, I, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a copper or a bronze, that was what it was, it was a bronze. Um, get the right thing here. And then all I did was uh, I needed to gold it up a bit more, and then we'll age it. Uh, it's already kind of getting there because we started with the bronze base. Uh, I like doing that, starting with a darker base and building up the highlights. And then I just used um, uh, Basics uh, Gold. Uh, I had another one you saw earlier, but it was solid as a rock. I mean, that was uh, 
ancient so uh, this this stuff is working really well uh, put a little bit on the plate just a small sort of um, stiff brush and uh, pick up a few dabs of that and just it's actually too much and I see I'm just sort of dabbing around the uh, edges and you know nothing you know you, this is where you want to make things look um, you're you're sort of forcing what's the word I'm looking for a uh, it to look random <laughs> so you're you don't want to sort of be thinking about this just sort of do stuff and that might be a little bit too much but here's the thing now there might be too many spots of gold but what we'll end up doing is we're going to age this, give it that aged look by using some blacks and stuff. So that could cover that up anyway, some of the gold up. And then I might go back over and touch it a few times just to make sure that the gold really, uh, really pops out in a few places where maybe like they were touching so that it, it rubbed and made it, um, made it more, uh, more gold. And just going to grab a little bit more. I think I'll do some of the uh, inner leaves of this. To really um, get that. All right, so there we go. The inner, you can see the nice shine on that. That metallic paint is really nice. The basic stuff is cheap. You, go, you know, I get a lot of stuff at Michael's, and you know, you go there with the coupon, or you just bring your phone, and then you, you call it up, and they scan it, and you can get a whole bunch of stuff for like 50% off. It's really cool. So um, there we go. So now we've got the. Uh, I'm not going to touch it because I got some gold on me. Well, I can get the inside, I guess. We've got the outsides here. We've got the insides. We really now need to just stop being impatient and let things dry. Then the next step is going to be giving this another coat. And if it's in focus, there we go, giving it another coat uh, inside and outside, or you know what I mean, the rim. Uh, give this a few more touch ups on it. And then we're going to take a look at the electronics. And uh, I'll show you some of the programming that we had to do, or we, it's just me, some of the programming I had to do, and uh, see how we're going to fit all of this in there and you can see I already gouged out uh, a nice big spot in there for all the electronics so um, just sort of took a heat gun softened it a bit and then uh, gouged it out with a knife so everything can sort of sit in there I just realized too I still need to drill a hole in one of these that the wires will come up and uh, the LED will be sitting in so we need to do that as well all right guys next up electronics Okay, so this is like a tenth number. I don't know, 25, most of them off camera. Had a problem. I, um, in cramming things in, I snapped something that I didn't notice. Uh, it was loose. It was on the battery. So now we're going to try this again. And I cleaned out some more stuff in the inside here. I have to be careful, though, too, that I don't clear so much out that I go through the underside. Um, but it should, I should be able to get it this time again, as long as I don't crack a wire again. So let's go ahead and give this a try one more time. Now that I think I get it, I'm going to leave it on. So in case something happens, uh, I know right away. So, okay. We pull this guy up. So the wires are coming out of here. I'm going to try to stay on camera on this as much as possible, but uh, or in frame. But um, to get this in here is not an easy feat. <laughs> so let's see now if I bring this around.
Ich mach's auch. I got a little bit of a lip going on and I'm afraid that's just not close enough because that's going to make it make it so that the top does not hit or does not um, these need to touch the silver not the gold and the gold is going to touch problem is I just can't imagine what else I can do to make that thing fit I'm going to push on it that might work That might, that might work. Um, here's the thing. Do I glue this and then put this on and then it doesn't really fit well? Or do I keep trying to take this apart and put it together and make this thing fit in here? Uh, that is the dilemma, huh? I think I'm gonna glue it and take my chances. Not the smartest move probably, but I have been fooling with this sucker for a while now, and I am ready to see if I can make it work. This is scary. Now I'm gonna push down on this pretty hard, and let's hope that the light doesn't turn off while I'm doing it. And, Give this a shot of accelerant. Oop, probably should not get the electronics. That's probably enough. All right, now we hold this down. Taking a bit of a chance here, but <clears throat> we'll see. I got a bit of a cold too, if you can't tell. So let's see. So yeah, for glue, I just use um, Loctite and I've just got some generic accelerant um, that I found at my dad. You saw that his place. He's got stuff laying all over the place. So this is, uh, it's not the best accelerant, but it does the trick. And what that is, if you're not sure, it accelerates the curing process of the super glue. And that's how well it works, right? Look, my fingers are glued right to the infinity orb. Ow. Ah, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> oh, there's some skin on there. All right. Now I need to trim back a lot of this wire here because uh, we don't need uh, all that. And I cannot cram that in there. At least I don't think I can. No. So I'm going to need to cut this back quite a bit and then work on that switch. Okay, so I uh, still can't get this in here, so I decided to do some uh, melting. And again, I need to be careful that I don't hit the wires, but I, I, I'm worried I'm going to do more damage by trying to, like, force them in. So I'm going to melt them. Give myself some extra space. There. Now, how to get that in there? I worry about getting super glue on that but i think i'm gonna just make sure i don't get it on the switch and i go off to the side just to get it in place for now just a little i cannot get any glue on that switch all right let's give it some pressure well that looks pretty good I'm gonna fill this uh, with some wood putty uh, and then go over it with some silver to make it look nice and pretty but you know I need to test this to see if this is gonna work so let's lock these guys together find the that magic spot Wow so boom it closes it, oh, I can't believe that it pushed down far enough. I was really nervous. So now, if we open this guy up, boom, the light comes right on. And of course, when we push it down, it's turning off. Okay, so I just have some wood putty, and I just use this Pro Wood filler. And that'll be in the show notes. 
And uh, I am just sort of going around the switch really carefully. And again, it doesn't have to look super perfect because this is all very pockmarked and crazy looking. I'll empty out some of the little holes in there so that it looks more natural. But um, I'm just going to use the back, uh, the sort of the end of this paintbrush to uh, get into some of the little uh, areas I can't really get in with my finger. Some type of a palette knife probably would be better, but this is working pretty well. So these have got to dry, and then we'll should be ready to uh, add some of the final paint to it. Well, okay, here it is, finally finished. Again, that programming and that wiring took me forever, but I figured it out through a lot of help from uh, Adafruit's uh, support area and over at the Fast LED Google Plus group. I want to thank them a lot. I've learned so much in this program, and again. Here it is. The seam looks really, just looks fantastic. Uh, cleaning that up and adding some extra caulk in there, some filler really makes that look really neat. It's got a nice weight to it, especially I think with the electronics and the battery in it. And this is the gem that I found. And believe it or not, I looked all over the place, different rock shops and whatnot. We'd be somewhere and uh, I'd look around. And believe it or not, we were in uh, where were we? We were in, in Paris, in the Louvre. And apparently there's a huge mall in the, in the Louvre downstairs. On our way out, we found it. And there's a gem shop. And this was like in like the five euro uh, bucket. And I got it for five euros. It was a lot for one stone. But man, I thought it was perfect. It's got that round shape that I like. Um, like the classic Infinity Stones. It's got a good size. It's very purple, but it's got some clear stuff to it. Uh, I just really dug this. Uh, and I was hoping it would fit. And it did. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. Now I want to make sure I get the right size or the right bottom and top I probably should have checked on that before I um, before I did anything and I need to charge it okay now the cool thing is to charge it if you remember I put a USB cable that goes into the trinket so now all you have to do instead of trying to change the batteries out is plug this USB in at the bottom to charge it. So right now the battery that it's in there is charging. So uh, let's go ahead and put the stone in while it's charging. Now again it's off because of the switch. I should open this up and boom it's just working. And then again when we close it when I hit that little switch, when the lid flaps down, it does that. And I clean this up and I put some more silver down. Uh, and it's really, you'd be hard pressed to see that switch. So uh, let's go ahead and drop the stone in. I think I'm going to have it with the, like that. So there it is. I'm going to turn off uh, one of these lights. Actually, you know what? I think I will reach over and turn off the other one. And there we go. You've got the, the light sort of twinkling because of the program of the Adafruit uh, trinket. And that just looks so cool. And then when we put the cap on, It locks the gems inside there. Again, it's charging the battery up and it's all set. It's totally closed. It, the light, I just, it, <laughs> I am so, so happy with this. And then we lift this off and the light automatically comes on. I don't need to flip a switch. I don't need to do anything. Lifting it up just flips that switch up. Fantastic. I am super excited to have this first prop uh, done on the site and uh, it is looking really great. Now, well, again, that was a fun first build. Uh, I am <laughs> I am just digging this. The silver from the rub and buff, uh, the, the just a the little bit of gold paint on the inside, the electronics, it just 
pop this thing open. It's glittering and sort of shining. Very, very excited. I learned a lot on this project. I am looking forward to adding more electronics and more LEDs as the pro as the different things I'm working on progress. Uh, one of the things I'm really looking forward to tricking out is the Star Lord helmet, which we'll be working on at some point in this process. But uh, yeah, turned out really well. I'm really happy with it. Again, in the show notes, you'll find all the materials I used for this, the Thingiverse files, the uh, the paints I've used, the electronics, everything. Uh, links to the code, the tutorials. Now, if you haven't seen the video I did, uh, I did a detailed video on just the electronics. Uh, I think it was called um, the you know the Adafruit uh, trinket. Uh, yeah, the Adafruit Trinket, the NeoPixel button tutorial, where I really go into detail and show you schematics of the diagrams and the code. But over there, you can also find all the, the code and the instructions on how to do the insides of this. Um, yeah, really fun project. I'm really uh, glad that you took the time to watch all this. I really appreciate it. This is fun. It's a labor of love. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, again, if you want to just go ahead and check out any of the things I, I bought to make this, if you use the links below, they are um, affiliate links to Amazon and whatever you buy there, I get a little bit of change and that helps me buy filament. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. Uh, maybe you can help me out. I'm either going to do Star-Lord's rocket boots and I'm going to be adding some LEDs to those, uh, his blasters. I'm thinking of LEDs on that, but I'm not sure because that's just how that print was set up. Uh, it's, it, I've got to do a lot of like boring and drilling, but we'll see. So that, the helmet, um, the belt, uh, let's see, the pants. I think that's it. I think that's it. I don't have the jacket yet. So, you know, if you get a second, uh, mention down in the, uh, the, uh, comment area, what you'd like to see me do next. If I don't see anything, if no one posts anything, um, I think I'm going to do the boots. So I guess if you don't want to see the boots, put something else. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, uh, go ahead and click like and subscribe. This way, you know, when videos are coming out, you'll get a little notification that a, a video has come out. Uh, I've got some really fun things planned and, uh, really excited, really excited. This, uh, I'm so psyched that this turned out uh, as, as well as it did. So again, I want to thank you uh, for watching the first build here on the 3D Printed Props channel. And have a good night. Or day. Wherever you are. <laughs>